All right, so we are back and this project we are going to be looking at spirals. So spirals or cool looking things like what you're looking at at the moment on the screen are kind of these beautiful things that appear all over nature. We see them in our solar systems, around atoms, around snails, shells, and in flowers. So there's a lot of maths and principles that kind of go behind it. And just taking that aside for a moment, they are beautiful. Like, have a look at the photos carrying up. To show you a little bit more explicitly, um, this, is, this is a photo of the Milky Way. So both of these photos are of the Milky Way um, galaxy, which contains our solar system. So Earth is some weird small dot. You, you can't even hope to see it in a photo like this. Um, but you can see the kind of spiral shapes that are being formed. You have these arms that are radially increasing and rotating around some sort of center point. Now, the maths behind it is pretty complicated. Here we can quickly see, um, we as well have it in like a shell. Um, where spirals can be seen again. Um, the math is really complicated. Um, as you can see, like this kind of stuff, I've done like engineering at university and I look at this stuff and I'm like, what are we looking at? We got like an integral, a square. Um, here we're, we're moving on to, I was just, it's, it's giving me a headache just looking at it. Luckily, we're not going to be doing maths this intense. We're still going to be able to create these kinds of spirals, but using a more simple method. Again, here you can see you've got the solar system and as well a flower. And you can see the kind of spiral patterns which are happening at the center of this flower. So this is a really cool phenomena and we're going to learn how to code it. I'll show you the final project. The final project looks something like this. Um, let me make a little bit more space here. So we're going to have a bunch of variables we are going to be able to play with, but have a look at how awesome this is. So this um, is a spiral that's currently growing um, outwards, and you can see its color kind of changing um, as it goes. It might be going a little bit slow. Let's just do, or might be slowing down my computer because there's a lot going on here. Um, we can change some variables, so like we can have the number of arms of the spiral. So let's just go with one arm. And we can see we have one arm of the spiral that's going outwards. We can change it to two arms. And we should see two arms that kind of rotate around themselves. We can put that up to 10. And we get, we get this awesome kind of shape that flowers outwards. Um, and, and it'll, keep, it'll keep just growing like this. We could keep the arms, but we can also change some other variables. I have other variables here called A increment and R increment. You're gonna learn all about this, so don't worry, but just to, this is all just to inspire you. So maybe if we do like 45 and one, you might see something a bit weird. We kind of get these straight lines that go outwards. It went super quick, so let's like reduce the speed a little bit. And we can see these arms kind of going outwards and still have this cool shape in the middle. But if I change this to 45.5, all of a sudden you're going to see how it like starts to curve. If I decrease this variable um, to something like this, you can see that it's, it's going to become far more dense um, as, it, as it starts to increase. And it's going to take some time to get to, um, to the end here. Um, I'll maybe put at the end of this video some links to just this, like some of, some of the beautiful spirals that, that tend to appear from this. But it is awesome stuff. So with that being said, that's introduction to spirals. We're gonna jump in, we're gonna learn how to code them. So we are going to dive into it. Again, I am just obsessed with how awesome these things look. Just how satisfying is that? And how beautiful are some of these kind of, um, spirals and visualizations um it's i could just play this for days but we we need a code so we can make it so i will put a link in the description of this video for you to follow along um and and code code with me so as always we have our two functions setup and draw now inside of setup we do create canvas um, and usually we put something like 600 600 the the width of the canvas and the height and we can put inside of draw some sort of background same stuff as always um, so we have a red square now one cool thing we can do just to make this visual a little bit more appealing it takes up more of the screen is we could use a variable called window dot inner width 
and window.inner height. And what that is, is it's just going to be the height of this window over here. So whatever, as you can see, I can, I can dynamically change how wide this is. So you can see how much white is changing. Um, as, I, as I change this, this variable, window.inner width and window.inner height, is kind of keeping track of that. So when I do that, it will now take up the whole screen. Um, you still have a little bit of kind of spacing over here, but it's taking up the whole screen, um, which is which is great. So that's going to help. So we have window dot inner width, window dot inner height. Now I'm going to make our background black, and I'm going to show you guys something cool. We have a particular function that I've written only in this kind of code. So you need to be working in this code base. You'll see, like, you need to have this utils file in order for this to work. But you can do something like this. You can say strive dot draw tick axes and when I hit run you will see that we get kind of an axis system and this is the coordinate system we're talking about right so there is position 50 50 there is position 100 100 here's your x-axis here is your y-axis so this is actually quite useful because then it can very easily show us if say we wanted to put a circle at position 200 200 and we wanted to make it 100 across we'll see it come up exactly there, right? So that's 200, 200, and it's going, its diameter is, is 100 units. Now, we're going to learn about two kind of, what's called transformations. Um, they're called translate um, and rotate. So with translate, the way it works is the follows. Notice what happens if I say translate and I just say 200, 200. Everything kind of moved down on the screen from the top point, from the top left corner, from where it used to be, down a little bit to the, towards the right, um, diagonally. So what we have is now this point. Whatever we specify as the coordinates x, y, that becomes our new origin. It becomes our new zero point. So now this circle at position 200, 200, it used to be up here. It's now moved 200 to the right and 200 down because our new origin is over here. So when we're saying circle, we're saying, um, or, and we're giving it the coordinates, we're saying it relative to our origin. So if I change this to 300, it's going to move the whole graph over to the right. You see that? So I'd move the whole graph over to the right. Let's maybe make it a little bit more explicit. Let's go like 600. And we'll see it's going to move all the way there. And the circle's nearly off the screen. And we can move it up or down. If I change this to 100, it's going to move the entire canvas up. So we're able to move around the canvas. Now, if we're wanting to go right into the middle, right? So we want our origin, our zero point to be in the middle. We could say something as width over 2 and height over 2. Now, width and height are variables stored by p5.js. They are the global variables that store how wide our canvas is and how high our canvas is. So now when I put run, you notice it comes right in the middle. Um, let's take that away for, like, if we then put circle at position 0, 0, and 50, you'll notice we get a circle right in the middle. But now if I take this translate away, it's going to move it all back up because now our zero point is over there. So that should hopefully make sense in regards to translation. Now the cool thing, right, is that like if we take away this background and let's say, let's say we just say we create these global variables, let x is equal to zero, let y is equal to zero, and we translate um, x and y, um, and I'm going to, let's maybe, let's keep background for now. And I hit run, you're going to see the entire screen or oh, I haven't actually incremented it. I needed to do this, x++, plus plus, y++. Plus plus. Um, and now notice how you'll see the entire canvas move because every time this is looping, it's translating by a new x and a new y. If I take away the background, we get like a cool trippy kind of thing um, because now it's just drawing one on top of the other. But that's a quick introduction to translate. So that's translations. The next thing I want to quickly go over is rotations. And as you might expect, if translation is like moving the canvas left and right, rotation is going to rotate the canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is inside of setup, I'm going to put angle mode, and I'm going to say degrees. 
Now, don't worry about it for now because it's a little bit more of an advanced maths topic. You have two kind of um, systems for, for displaying angles. One of them is radians and another one is degrees. Um, degrees is the typical one you're used to with a one revolution or one full circle being 360 degrees. So when I say rotate and I say 45, look at what happens. Everything rotates by 45 degrees. Which way did it rotate? Right? Did it rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Rotated clockwise. Now, if I did negative 45, it would rotate counterclockwise. Right? So it's kind of, it's starting. So let me rotate by zero, which is to say, okay, don't change the rotation. Starting here, and then this whole canvas moves, um, rotates this way or this way, depending. Right? So if I say rotate 45, it rotates down there. Now notice as well, the coordinates are staying like we're expressing in terms of a new coordinate system. It's not the regular coordinate system starting at zero, zero over there, but the point 200, 200 is now over there and the point zero, zero is there. So let's, let's draw like one triangle just to illustrate this. If I want a triangle to fill up the top part over here, I say triangle. Um, let's go from zero, zero and I want it to go to 0, 200. It can be difficult to keep track of what's the x and what's the y axis. And then 200, 0. So let's see, let's see if that works. Oh, we got, it at the, we got it at the bottom here, not at the top. Because this would be negative 200, negative 200. Let's actually quickly change that and we can see that. Negative 200, negative 200. So that's showing, that's showing you now that there is the triangle according to these new coordinates. I can maybe get it into a nice color, um, like fill it with something like green. There we go. Um, so that, that is showing you um, rotations. And similarly to what we did before, if I put a global variable called angle, I make that equal to zero, and I rotate by angle, and I just say angle plus plus plus, which is angle plus equals one. Notice what happens. It just keeps rotating. And when it gets to 360, it's the same as getting back to zero, right? So when you rotate a full revolution, it's the same as getting back to zero. So it just keeps going and this will go on and on. Um, that's going to be the end. My challenge before watching the next video, can you figure out how to make a circle then? Um, kind of if you had one point, how would you make a make a circle from this? I'll leave you, I'll leave you to discover. I'll see you in the next one.